Washington State. Look forward to being back in the Bay Area, um, but it's a shame the fans won't be there. To college hoops we go, beginning on the women's side, number two, UConn, met Georgetown. Beckers with 550. Tips to Williams, they do it again. Ninth assist for Beckers, 19 for Williams. 55-30. The game of basketball was, was being played rather than shooting was happening. So she shot the ball fairly well, but she was involved in a, in a lot of other things on the floor. So from that perspective, it was... It was it was a really good game for her. Start for the left hander. Here's the left. Five points out of the key. Bounce pass to Becker. She's free. Cross court to Westbrook. Up top. Williams on the right. Here's a Becker's triple. Bringing rain down. Yes, it's good. The Huskies dusted off a shaky start to beat Georgetown 64 to 40. Freshman Paige Becker's led the team with 19 points, one point shy of finishing with 20 or more points for seven straight games. The Huskies scored 18 points in the third quarter to take a 19-point lead into the final frame. UConn faced St. John's next on Wednesday. Georgetown fall to 1-10 in 10 and face Creighton on Monday. On the men's side, number six, Illinois facing Nebraska. Here is Devontae Williams, right wing, looking inside for Kofi. The catch and the finish and another slam dunk. What are we up to, five? Five for Kofi, 45 on the year for the Illini big man. 53-52, the Illini back in front. 12 to shoot, out of the timeout. Dosuma with Illinois up 73-70. Being chased out top. Now he's going to go right, pull up. Just near the arc, and he knocked it down. Dosumu hits another one. 75-70, Illinois. Counted for two. He was just inside the arc. Brian Barnhart from Learfield IMG College with the call. Dosumu scored the last 10 points in regulation for Illinois and the first five in overtime, leading to a 77-72 win over the Cornhuskers. Sports Center All Night ESPN Radio, Jacksonville Jaguars Director of Sports Performance Chris Doyle, the former strength coach at the University of Iowa who was accused of making racist remarks, belittling and bullying players, resigned late Friday night, just hours after the organization was criticized for the hire by the Fritz Pollard Alliance. Freddie Coleman, host of Freddie and Fitzsimmons, says Doyle wouldn't have been hired if he was properly vetted. See, this is what happens when you think you can get away with something, and unlike in college, you get called out for it in the National Football League. Because Urban Meyer, he was steadfast. I made this hire because this is the right hire. And, you know, we have a relationship for our years back in Utah. We vetted everybody. We vetted every, everybody. Every if you really vetted Chris Dog, there was no reason to even think about hiring that guy. On the same show, Ian Fitzsimmons thinks someone from the league made Doyle resign. That tells me, Freddie, that the, the league offices made a very pointed and firm phone call. Coach Meyer, this is not college football. You do not reign supreme on any team. You've got a lot of other choices. That one got to go. Get him out of the building. Sticking with the NFL, the quarterback carousel continues. We've seen the likes of Matthew Stafford, Jared Goff find new homes. We've talked about Deshaun Watson and the Texas Texans earlier on the show. Drew Brees could retire. There are question marks around Ben Roethlisberger and Aaron Rodgers and much, much more. Well, let's focus our attention to Dallas, where Dak Prescott was noticeably absent from a Cowboys hype video on the team's official Twitter account. Then, of course, the Instagram detectives noted that Prescott followed the Washington football team on the gram. Holy moly, a move is confirmed, everybody. Former Cowboys Super Bowl championship winning quarterback Danny White said on Keyshawn, J. Will, and Zubin, Hang on, folks. Dak is a franchise QB. Let things play out and let the dollars fall in place. I don't know what's going on. I think it's more of a financial decision. They Both sides have said this is going to happen long term. I believe that. I, I don't think there's any question that Dak is a franchise quarterback. If the Cowboys don't sign Dak to a long term, long -term contract, they better have something in mind <laughs> as a solution. Uh, they better have something in their back pocket that they're going to turn to because you don't come across a guy like Dak that checks all the boxes in this day and age where leadership in the locker room is so critical. And we saw that, I think, with the...